Hello. Here's the latest addition to my shack. As you can see from the packaging, it's an SDR Play RSP DX. Now, why did I buy this? Because if you see my earlier videos, I already had um, an RSP 1A. But the main attraction with this radio for me, as you can see on the packaging here, is it's got a multi antenna port. It's actually got three antenna connections. Now, given that the RSPDX covers from LF 1 kilohertz up to 2 gigs, this gives me the opportunity to put my spare VHF UHF antenna on one port. And the other two remaining ports, I could, for example, put my Bonnie Whip Active Antenna on my HF doubler. I'm hoping to temporarily remote control this receiver. Over the Christmas period, I'll be at my partner's uh, QTH. And uh, I'll be able to control the SDR play, I'm hoping, using SDR console and SDR server software. And I'll show you that in uh, a future video, of course. Now the disadvantage of doing that is that at the what will be the remote location here I'll have to leave a PC running to act as the server which the radio, the SDR will be connected to and I'll have to install SDR console software on the laptop or whatever device I'm using at the remote location. So it's not quite as versatile as the Kiwi SDR which has its own inbuilt single board uh, computer but this covers up to 2 gigs so I'll be able to listen to uh, VHF and UHF as well and uh, we'll go all into that as I say in a future video but for the time being let's just open the box here I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who said he didn't understand unboxing videos and to be honest neither do I but I just wanted to show you this radio in comparison to the RSP1 that I've got. And uh, here we are. This is the other box if it comes. Doesn't seem to really come out of the box. There it is. Okay. This is the RSP DX. It's quite a heavy little package. You can see the three antenna connectors, two SMAs and a BNC there and we've got the USB connector and a port for um, an external uh, clock reference I think or GPS reference uh, to go in there other than that it's, it's a very plain package no LEDs or power indicators or anything and let's just have a look at the RSP1A which is a lot smaller now, um, incidentally, this isn't in a standard case. This was an aftermarket metal case for the RSP1A, which I felt um, hopefully improved the shielding of the receiver, but certainly made it a little bit more robust. It comes from the supplier in a plastic case, the 1A. But as you can see, the radio is a lot smaller. And even with the metal case, it's quite a bit lighter than the 1A, so there's got to be a few differences. And the 1A just has a single antenna connector and a USB port. You've got a little ground leg that comes as part of the metal case. But a standard, you've just got the, um, the, the two connectors, the USB and the single SMA. As opposed to the three connectors on the RSPDX. The RSPDX uh, also apparently has... Um, let's just see if I can get the camera to focus back on the packaging. Um, it has enhanced ability to cope with strong signals. And um, it has uh, enhanced lower band performance, long wave, medium wave and so on. And some reviews I've said actually say that it's an improvement. Some reviews I've seen rather say it's an improvement over the RSP1A on HF generally. But we'll see about that. Anyway, there it is, the RSP DX from SDR Play. 1 kilohertz to 20 gigs with the three antenna ports. 
and uh, we're going to initially control this using SDR console. The SDR UNO software that the SDR Play company recommends with these devices I find not as easy to use as SDR console. But that software is being rewritten and I think in 2023 we're going to see a new type of software from the SDR Play which will also have the ability to run an SDR Play device remotely. So that should be interesting and again we're going to use that with the RSPDX. So thank you for watching and more videos on the RSPDX coming soon.